Live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2016. Brought to you by Mirantis. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Lisa Martin. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley for the OpenStack SV, OpenStack Silicon Valley event hosted by Mirantis and the Industry Open, and the OpenStack Foundation. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. Where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Lisa Martin. Our next guest is Alex Friedland, who's the CEO of Mirantis, also sponsoring the event, also sponsored theCUBE uh, with the o OpenStack Foundation. Thank you so much for supporting theCUBE. Welcome back. Good to be here. So we'd like to get you at the end of the day because one, you're tired, you're going to just tell us things <laughs> and spill the guts, not yeah, on the uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, we're spilling the guts today during the confidential <laughs> session, right? But we can't share any of that. We promise it's going to stay in the room, right? Continue, <laughs> it's all live. Don't worry, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Um, That's right. I've been commenting at the opening segment that Lisa and I did, our editorial segment, being on the front row of watching OpenStack grow from the beginning. The twinkle in the eye of Rackspace, here and uh, NASA here back in, oh, back to you know, 08, I think it was. 10. Or, yeah, 010. Yeah. Well, they kind of were thinking about it Yeah, earlier. they were thinking but about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, Amazon's out there. But all of a sudden, every year, everyone says, uh, OpenStack is dead. Since the foundation really pivoted around contribution, not a vendor-centric model, growth has happened. Yes. So my theme this year was, OpenStack continues to be the survivors. They're navigating and zigging and zagging properly and we've seen the evolution, but this is the year that we're talking about thriving, going to that next level. So survive and thrive. So my first question to you is, you know, as you guys grow, you guys have been you know, surviving, but also building real value for your customers and thriving as a standalone company. We but have as an ecosystem, where's the thriving going to come from? So I believe the ecosystem, again, there's, there's, been, there's been continuous development of the ecosystem. It started with people proving that it is able to do things. Then it, uh, it continued with saying, hey, let's put certain workloads. Now there are some very large users who are understanding that this is the only way to build the cloud. And there is a movement of large operators who are making OpenStack um, their um, you know, de facto cloud standard and putting serious money. Um, if you look at, um, I mean, it became public um, in December, but AT&T is building AIC, which is AT&T Integrated Cloud, which is meant to be the Amazon-sized cloud. You know, over 75% of all the workloads in the uh, um, in in AT&T data centers, both on the IT side and on the network side. So not only they're building this very ambitious program, they're doing it out on the open, and they have announced it to the world. And now what they're saying is that everything that they've delivered. They're looking to open source, and they're partnering with the ecosystem and with the other operators to be able to, to drive the ecosystem together. And um, there was an innovation blog published by uh, Sorab Saxena, who is the head of um, AIC, that says, here is the way to do open ecosystems. We're kind of leading in that, and we are suggesting that whatever we've done, you guys take and reuse, and let's do a user group that does it across all the operators and big, so big players out there. So complete contribution in the open, right, right. all the cards on the table. Correct, because ultimately what they're saying is, we're not really competing in cloud with Verizon or Reliance. Right, we're actually partners to make sure that the open technology works better, so the agility and the cost is better, and then we're competing with Facebook, right, that's becoming a new digital telephone company, right? So that's what they're trying to get. Some say government. Well, I that's too, if you choose, know, right, so whatever. I mean, they could replace the post office. <laughs> there you I go. I mean, they get, they're that massive, and you got China too, other big, I mean, so yeah. telco's got some challenges, these guys, don't it's they? It's very true. So they have, to, they have to innovate faster, and they have to do it at the scale and the cost that the hyperscalers are doing it. And unless they do it together, they're not going to have the innovation that's necessary to get it done. So from that perspective, China Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon are actually partners. And they're starting a very focused outreach to each other, and then bringing other non-telco players into the mix. And to your point, the stakes are high, right? I mean, the consequences for not doing Correct. this are yeah. massive. Massive, they're not going to be around for much longer. So they have to do it, it's a, it's a forced move, but that will drive further ecosystem development because these guys don't have an agenda to kind of verticalize and lock in 
uh, because they have products to sell. They're actually trying to disintermediate to make sure that every layer they keep all the profits so they can be profitable at scale. Right? And that is what every operator wants. And now finally there's a critical mass of operators that are all coming together. So, so you that think the scale thing is their big move? Well, scale and agility. Yeah. They have to do it fast, right? I mean, you've heard the stories that, uh, I mean, the technologies are great. You know, OpenStack is wonderful, Kubernetes is wonderful, it's all great. But today, you go, you know, inside of a big organization, you're trying to get yourself the infrastructure to get things done. Unless you go to Amazon, you can't do it. It takes, you know, three months to provision VM. It takes five months to, you know, to put something from test to production. That cannot last, right? So you have to yeah. do it automated and self-service. Continuous. And that OpenStack today is the only game in town um, to, you know, um, um, you know, VMware in some ways, but the model doesn't scale, right? So um, there'll be others that will come in and, and augment that story, but that's, what, that's what's driving those, those, those companies to do it. And there's enough of them to start driving the ecosystem. In terms of, of drive, just a question popped into my mind as we were talking, and you were talking about AT&T, winner of the Super User Award at the Austin OpenStack right. Summit back in April. How much has, we talk about collaboration, the, what, over 600 supporting companies as part of OpenStack Initiative, but how much has it been driven by AT&T as, as the dominating use case? How much has AT&T driven OpenStack to where it is today? A little bit, but not a lot yet. Um, and um, they, 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 they've taken whatever OpenStack had and they've took a project and made a platform internally and they've incurred a certain degree of um, technical debt, as they say it. And again, this innovation blog talks about it quite well. Uh, and now what they're doing is they're saying, we solved all of these problems, we have a contribution team internally that is now up, out, you know, uh, upstreaming all of that, and you guys, the partners, you know, can use it, um, but also come and help us, and they're creating a platform so that the reuse will happen. So today, they've done, uh, you know, quite a bit of innovation internally that is just starting to trickle back up, but they are completely committed to my surprise, actually, and admiration that such a large company, they have to change a lot of things internally to allow to you know, open source things and all that, and they've been going through all those changes, and the speed of, of, um, of, that, of that change is increasing. So, you know, I, you know, if they continue on the same path when we're here next year, they will be actually a very huge driver of this whole thing. So how about the, um, the, the tagline for this event, the Unlocked Infrastructure Conference. I noticed yep. some of the signage. Um, you guys position Marantis as pure play, you know, OpenStack. Yes. Kind of tied in there. Obviously NFT, you mentioned the telcos. We don't want to really go there. It's been talked about for a long time. Why, what is unlocked? And then second question is, what is the next, you know, 20 mile stair? What's that next horizon? Is it IoT? Is it the big data? Can you share your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. So unlocked means that in whatever choices you make when you choose a platform, you don't have a dependency on um, a vertical stack, right? So um, I mean, the traditional business, you know, you buy something from Cisco, they have wonderful products, but you get stuck on their APIs, and when you kind of start moving, you can only buy stuff from Cisco, or EMC, or HP, or what have you. So, with this intermediation through an open platform, what happens underneath is abstracted by an API, which means that you can actually take I don't know, a, a Cisco router and replace it by Juniper router or by Arista router, and so long as they're both compliant in the API, in the Neutron APIs, uh, you can replace them, right? So, unlock means that you can that's, bring... That's not good for Cisco. Well, but... And they want that nestedness, that's their... But it's good for, it's good for the user uh, that has to buy Cisco to run its network. But remember... From a lock-in standpoint. From a lock-in yeah, standpoint, they can right? So, so then remember the famous phrase that uh, uh, Jeff Bezos is saying that your margin is my opportunity. So if Amazon is driving commoditization of that space and destroys the margin, and if somebody who competes with, uh, you know, who's born in the cloud, you know, digital player that competes with a traditional player that is being disrupted by digital innovation has to pay Cisco margin at scale, guess how long they're going to be able to compete, right? Both on innovation and on cost. So unless that problem is solved uh, through, you know, through the cloud movement that we're pioneering, uh, we're, we're ushering in, uh, these companies are not going to be around. 
So whether you like it or not, whether it's good for Cisco or bad for Cisco, Cisco will have to evolve and change their business model as we're seeing happening across the board. And we're seeing the financial players are taking over you know, some, you know, you're seeing what's happening in Dell, you're seeing what's happening in, uh, in HPE. And that means they have to change the business model to go away from um, highly profitable locked-in solutions to a more agile services-based and value-based solutions. Right, but that's required for the industry to survive. So along the theme of today of unlocked, OpenStack can't guarantee, right? There's no vendor lock-in, um, but Mirantis does. Talk to us about your, your zero uh, vendor lock-in product and how has that been leveraged to help you achieve a 4X increase in subscription revenue over 2015? You know the numbers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, well, we at Mirantis, I mean, we have a, you know, we have a distribution, which, again, which is a standard, horizontal, disintermediated OpenStack distribution. We don't have any components inside the stack. We don't necessarily provide an operating system. We work with many. We don't necessarily tie ourselves to hardware, but we do certify with all, right? So, um, and in the, in, the, in the early days, it was kind of difficult to get big guys like Cisco and, uh, um, you know, HP and Dell come to us and say, we'll certify with you. So the conversation kind of went, okay, Mirantis, you're small, we're large, you need our hardware, so go and invest and buy our hardware and you can certify if you want. Now, you start winning some of the large customers, you know, we got AT&T, we got VW, we got, you know, Verizon, you know, Shenzhen Stock Exchange in China, and suddenly you start looking around, most of the buyers who are buying billions of dollars of infrastructure are having conversations with the vendors who are saying, well, it's wonderful, but, you know, for this motion, we work with Mirantis, so if you're certified by Mirantis, great, go certify, and then you can bid for a continuous RFP because we're now not going to make our decision once every five years, we're going to run it on a continuous basis, and if you're on the list, you can participate. So, suddenly we have a line coming to us of different people underneath and above who want to be certified, and we have a sole certification process by which we bring them into the fold. Mm -hmm. And even our traditional competitors, like Helium people, have called us because their customers are telling them if you want to sell servers, you have to make Mirantis your first class citizen. So we're actually talking to HP around their Helium about partnership and becoming part of their story. Um, and you know, that's actually out in the public domain. So, um, But the opportunity for you is really the SLA aspect of it, which gives an opportunity for the partners to make their well, margin, right? So I mean, the you're, opportunity, you're making the market. The opportunity for us is to be able to provide, exactly, to provide a platform that will provide SLA to the operator, to the user, and then you know, we don't have a preference as to who comes in. If they're certified. If they're certified. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, yeah, if they're certified because you know, there is, there, there, there is a bomb issue, there is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all those complexities issue, and so, yeah, we don't want any surprises. So they need to be certified and then they can go in. But the process of certification is fairly simple and can happen in real time. It's not like you do it once and you're locked in for, you know. You can go and recertify every time you have a revision, and, you know, we make it pretty, pretty easy. And in fact, a lot of the certification we put in the community. So if you look at uh, um, the partnerships that are happening, you know, in Stackalytics there is a page that talks about you know, that kind of certification. So we're trying to not keep it inside Mirantis, but we're trying to push it so you can well, do it Well, it's more again. efficient that way because the game's changing very quickly. Correct. Talk about like orchestration Correct. and containerization. Yeah, we're exactly right. So, in fact, the, the value of containers is not necessarily the fact that you can put them on top of OpenStack infrastructure. The value of containers and orchestration is the fact that you can use container orchestration, well, you can use the um, the container itself yeah. to abstract any workload, yeah. right? Any part of an application, and then you use Kubernetes as an example as tooling to lifecycle manage anything, right? So that means that in infrastructure, no matter what you are delivering, you don't have to worry about the actual bits of the application. You can have a standardization across the supply chain, and that's the game changer that's happening. Yeah, you completely take that complexity way around that standardization. Right. And even yeah. if it is, it might be an interim step to what may happen, which is all speculation because it hasn't happened yet. Um, I got to ask you a question because one, we've been following you guys, and you know, I got to say, you're, you and your team, probably the hardest working <laughs> guys out there. And you know, it, it's not hasn't been easy. You've been had a good business. You got a good business going on here. Um, 
And so what have you learned? I mean, what's, I mean, obviously the world's moving in the right direction, so that's a positive well, thing. Well, the world is moving yeah. whatever direction it's moving. By yeah. definition, it's the right direction. You're down the road. It's like white water rapid. You don't know, you know until it's over, you, you know, all adrenaline's pumping. But you, know, you guys are working, you're putting the work in, and you've got a lot of customers and you're doing some great work. What have you learned? What's happening now, in your opinion, that you're looking for that next paddle, that next turn? What have you learned and what are you looking at? Well, I'm learning that um, change is hard. And um, change is hard uh, for us and for the customers as well. And as the world is changing and disruption is happening, traditional business models are being disrupted. Traditional buying patterns are being disrupted, but at the same time, the traditional patterns are still there, right? So it doesn't matter how still visionary- They still need uptime. Well, you, <laughs> yes, but yeah. it doesn't matter how visionary you are. You have to be able to solve a problem that your customer is getting ready to solve today. So that means that you cannot have a straight path to, you know, you have this direction, the straight path doesn't exist, there'll be an abyss in the middle. So you have to constantly tack. It's your yeah. zigzag, you know, John. Zigzag. Zig <laughs> yeah. If Don't you zig when you should be zagging. Yeah. That's the exactly. key to success, right? So that's right? number one. Uh, then uh, you have to work with people internally and externally in your own organization and your customers to be able to explain and um, um, craft a path. And you have to be able to operate in the state of uncertainty and still make progress because the complexity is large and you can't wait for clarity in order to make the next step. And that's a huge cultural yeah. shift, both for us and customers. Just and stay on you your toes too. Well, yeah. that means working hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's, about, it's about being able to make progress in the situation of unclarity that is not getting easier. Okay, so what are you getting excited about right now? Obviously, you're doing a lot of great deals. The Kubernetes deals prior to this event, obviously the, with uh, the Linux, the Enterprise Linux deal this morning was announced, kind of, yep. you know, you can see the stability. I mean, getting a bulletproof Linux kernel, and that's solid, right? That's a but big deal. But what are you excited about? I mean, as you look out, and that change is still going to be there, Yes, so I think the game changer that happened in the last you know, 12 months since you and I talked here at theCUBE is that the world seems to be standardizing. I mean, the world already standardized around uh, Docker containers even last year. I think the world is now standardizing across the standard delivery vehicle by which container lifecycle life cycle management is managed, which means that we think it's Kubernetes. I mean, there are people who are not yet, you know, in 100% agreement, but that standardization is important, whatever that is, because that means that the whole innov innovation lifecycle management of innovation and infrastructure can now become unified. If it can become unified, you can automate it and you can run it as a service in an automated way. And that means that finally there is a way to provide an Amazon-like delivery model across infrastructure innovation on-prem or in a managed data center. Yeah. And before it was very difficult to do because everything that you delivered was application specific and there was no unification. Right now, for the first time, I can see a light to say, hey, we can take the innovation of AWS, which is the delivery model, apply it across you know, with the help of Docker and Kubernetes across any innovation that happens and make it standard. Now that will scale to the size of Amazon. And I think we are kind of in the and forefront the of that movement. the management software is baked in. Yes. That's the key criteria too. Yes, well, you have to have the management software and you know, yeah. we, we have the components and the industry is going into management right so we're it. standardizing there too. But that finally will cause another Got zag it. or zig, depending on how you <laughs> want to call it, that will actually have a lot more legs to scale all the way to that you yeah. know, nirvana that we're all hoping so that, for. So that could be the key inflection point. That yes, I think around. we're getting to the point where we can actually see it. Good. So as we're halfway um, between development cycles, right, uh, with Barcelona, the OpenStack Summit coming up with uh, end of October near Halloween. Yes. Um, what are, how, what's that forecast, what's your predictions as, they, as the community, I'll, I'll use John's term of the day, zigzags towards uh, Barcelona. What are you expecting to hear and see at that summit coming up? Well, I mean, um, first of all, um, I, I expect the size of the uh, summit going to be probably similar to the previous summit because usually America is a little bit, you know, more crowded than Europe. So, but every, every next summit is a little bit bigger than the previous one. So it means we're going to be lateral probably. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of new people 
who are now taking OpenStack and Cloud seriously, who are Europeans and all that. So I expect a lot of new people, new faces that we haven't seen a year ago. Um, the next thing that I see is the container conversation is going to get even more <clears throat> um, important. And the whole merging of the container and OpenStack ecosystem into one. And the, um, the community will have to understand what it is because there is now a lot of splintering happening because some people still see containers as workloads, some people see containers as something that needs to be abstracted by OpenStack, and some people see it as an underlay. And really, all of that will have to come together. And then suddenly when it happens, the next conversation is going to be about the fact that everything is a workload. Infrastructure is a workload, workload is a workload, and there's a unification going on. And you will see conversations happening in all three layers where the visionary people will be making the statements like I just did, and there'll be a lot of darts flying at them, mm -hmm. and there'll be a lot <laughs> of It'll conversations be a good around debate, that. Which is right. good. <laughs> and then others will be still making big progress explaining how their view that already is accepted as making progress and there'll be more proof points in the industry. And the spectrum everywhere in between. Any projections on the next super user award winner? Um, I have some ideas, but as somebody who is um, on the board of the foundation, I'd rather not say. <laughs> Come on, spill the beans. <laughs> no. Make a prediction. It's confidential, All right, make remember. a prediction. I'm gonna put no. you on the spot. Some no. prediction. I could have made a prediction that AT&T won last year, <laughs> and I, I got into an argument with one of the um, um, one of the other contenders who didn't win, and I can still see some darts, oh. uh, you know, yeah. some scars in my body. So, but maybe these guys will win this time. Sometimes you just can't hold the maybe line. Maybe outside you know? of the, the telecom NFB space. Well, I think we should um, consider um, uh, the SaaS players. Maybe it's time that they did something amazing. Mm. Okay, there it is. A little bit of leg. He's showing <laughs> some leg here in the cube, <laughs> virtually speaking. Um, Alex, thanks so much for coming again, and thanks Pleasure. for sponsoring the cube. Of course. And Mirantis, you guys have been great partners at this event. You're the founding uh, part, uh, event here uh, at OpenStack SV, and of course we've covered everyone. I want to thank you personally. Thanks for, oh. for supporting Always us. Always a pleasure to talk to you guys. We're here extracting the signal from noise with the CEO of Mirantis, also putting on the show with the community. It's not just the Mirantis show, but it really shows the value of OpenStack. I'm John Ford, Lisa Martin. Right back with more, you're watching theCUBE.